Hello, this is Gray Hughes of Gray Hughes Investigates on YouTube. Please hit that like button, share, and subscribe. Today's video is actually the same video that I put out yesterday. Uh, for some reason, YouTube put the video in a crazy algorithm and almost nobody saw it compared to the other videos I've been putting out. And I think this is one of my better ones. So if you would take the time to watch it, I would really appreciate it. And um, make sure to hit that like button, share, and subscribe. And let's get started on this video right now. The Madeline Soto case has become very divisive in regards to Jennifer Soto. Everybody knows that Stephen Stearns is the killer. To me, this kind of reminds me of the Chris Watts case and how everybody started to go after his girlfriend, thinking that she was involved. Because after Chris Watts was arrested, man, there's nothing really to go after, so let's go after somebody else. Now, in this case, you know, this is Madeline Soto's mother, and she allowed Madeline to sleep with Stephen Stearns up in bedroom number four on the night. As a matter of fact, she said, hey, can you guys go sleep up there? And the way she casually talks about it, it seems like it was normal in their household. She didn't feel like or didn't seem like she believed there was something wrong with it. And I believe that Stephen Stearns is the one that manipulated them all to make it seem normal. He groomed Maddie to say certain things and Jennifer Soto believed it to be normal. So because there's such a huge divide in this case and so many people hate Jennifer and there are a lot of people that actually see that a predator is a predator and that's Stephen Stearns and they do what they do. They are able to convince the parent and they are able to convince the uh, child to say certain things by giving them gifts, you know, the whole grooming thing. Uh, you have to also ask yourself, how come she never told one friend, one relative, one teacher, one counselor, referring to uh, Madeline, she didn't tell any of them. So isn't it also plausible that Jennifer didn't know as well, even though she's living there? Because Stephen Stearns is just that good at being a predator. Now, one of the things that people talk about a lot are, is the we comment that she made. But when you have these unethical YouTubers out there that never show you the actual reality and the truth of the other side, people go on believing this stuff over and over and over again. And you're being sold a bill of goods by uh, other YouTubers. Now, the thing is, it's possible at some point we'll have other evidence that points to more involvement of Jennifer Soto. I just, I haven't seen it yet. So one thing I want you to keep in mind is listen to what Jennifer Soto said in a second interview. I think it's on page like 873 in these documents. I offered Jennifer a courtesy ride from the hotel that she and Stefan were staying at, at the OCSO Central Operations Building. Jennifer accepted the offer, and I transported her in my agency-issued vehicle in the passenger seat. During the transport, Jennifer and I had a brief conversation. While speaking, I noted that Jennifer referred to Maddie using the past tense several times when she mentioned her. And by the way, Using past tense means absolutely nothing. There have been many cases out there where innocent people use the past tense and they had absolutely nothing to do with it. It always looks good after the fact, though, if you can somehow connect the use of past tense to their involvement. But I think it's utterly meaningless. I inquired about whether or not it was normal to allow Jennifer and Stefan to sleep in the same room unsupervised. Jennifer replied this was not common practice. However, she did not have any suspicion that anything inappropriate would occur between the two. Jennifer used to be very hypervigilant around Stefan. However, as the years have gone by, she allowed Maddie and him to be alone because they get along very well. So this is like this kind of somewhat, somewhat private conversation she's having with an officer driving around. You can see things are 
starting to hit her and she just had no idea what was going on and you know it took a long time so notice how she says as years have gone by so during that time Stefan Stearns was grooming Maddie and trying to build the trust with Jennifer over the years and I think it absolutely did exactly what Stefan Stearns planned to do now we're gonna go over right now the we versus he information you know did, did she she said we multiple times and then you know uh, you know he's the one that took her to school and the thing is whenever you watch these YouTube channels they don't give you the other side and to me there is nothing here related to the we we is sometimes used when you're trying to make it seem like you know your family unit somebody in your family unit was the one that did it it could also be that Stephen Stearns kind of wanted the we used in here okay so let's just kind of look at it from that point of view all right so let's take a look at this video right now and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about we dropped her off at school close to school I was the one who took her to school in the morning that was my partner um, hey, did you hear that right after she said we dropped her off at school he said I wasn't the one that took her to school it was my partner so immediately She's saying what the reality is. The we might be something that they normally do, like I mentioned earlier, or maybe it is something that, you know, she's trying to help Stefan Stearns out a little bit by saying, like, it's we, you know, like, I had him do it. I should have been the parent that got up to take her to school. So, you know, uh, we took her to school, but then she does tell the reality of it each time. But, yeah. Monday morning, we took her to school. We dropped her off close to school. Oh my God, look at that. She's saying we again. Across the street from a church, which is very, it's right next to the school. And walk to school, what we thought walk to school. Um, my boyfriend who drove her to school walk, drove away at that point. So my boyfriend who drove her to school walked away at that point. So she said we before. She's not covering up anything. She says that he drove her to school. And here they are in the body camera footage these are at about 7 35 at night on the 26th the day madeline went missing so my daughter was dropped off close to school this morning but never made right. it i went to the from school uh, um, possibly i don't know she got dropped off she was like I, um, so she's embarrassed by this car so she didn't want to be dropped off at school she wanted to be dropped off like half a block away so she can walk She's in the Mustang. She's in the face. But um, he dropped her off half a block away and drove away. So see right there. She even says it again. Even in the original interview. So law enforcement's known the entire time that Stefan Stearns is the one that dropped off Madeline uh, near the school or was in charge of taking her to school that morning. So let's listen to this part again. So my daughter was dropped off. Close so even right there, when my daughter was dropped off, she doesn't say when I dropped off my daughter. Went to school this morning, but never made right. it. I went to the from school. Uh, okay. um, possibly, I don't okay. know. She got dropped off. She was like, I. Um, so she's embarrassed by this car. So she didn't want to be dropped off at school. She wanted to be dropped off like half a block away so she can walk. She's in the Mustang. Um, she's in the face. But um, he dropped her off half a block away and drove away. Okay. Did she ever go to school though? No, she, we called school. She was walking in that direction. She was rifling through her. I found this part interesting regardless. It's not really connected to that. But And listen to how they ask if, did she ever go to school? And Stephen Stearns doesn't answer the question. He wants to give them more explanation of how he dropped her off. You know, get that into your mind, police. I dropped her off. I really did. And I'm, I'm going to give you some really specific answers about that. And what's interesting is Jennifer at the end says, can you ask that question again? Because he didn't answer the question. She even realized that right then. But instead of answering, he wanted to further build on his case of how he uh, dropped her off and all these specific things he remembers, even kind of imitating how she walked, etc. Uh, to try to sell that narrative that he really did drop her off. But we all know from the evidence in this case that he, at some point, 
put Madeline's body into the vehicle, and her body is seen at 750 in one of the apartment complex's cameras driving out of the complex, and her body is propped up. She is not alive or is unconscious at the time. Then comes back at 819, her body is still visible, and then he goes inside the house, and then at 831, he drives away for the final time when her body is seen on camera. He leaves the complex at 831, and some of the timing of things match up where, you know, they say 830 to 845, she was dropped off, so that sort of matches that timing of him leaving. So her being propped up was purely done for a visual alibi for himself to try to prove that he really did take her to school. He just claims that she was sleeping. But man, I thought this was really interesting right here. Drove away. Okay. Did she ever go to school though? No, she, we called school. She was walking in that direction. She was rifling through her backpack, just looking for something. I thought maybe she was just looking for headphones before she caught her walking. Off. Did she ever go to school? Well, I dropped her out. I mean, it has nothing to do with that. She knows the answer, and he knows the answer, but he's not telling that part of the story. Yeah. Um, but she was just kind of, you know, shambling over in that direction. I mean, that's how she walked, kind of like a zombie right there. I mean, that's pretty weird there, Stephen Stearns. And we know that you're just trying to fill it in. It looked the same as any other morning. Okay. okay. Um, okay. What was the last thing you asked? Yeah, so what was the last thing you asked? <laughs> uh, did she ever make it to school? So she kept that in her mind, and Stephen Stearns never answered it. You could see that she was kind of like, how come you're not really answering the question? If she had went to school, I think it was um, um, was the last time you seen her? Do you know the around what time? Around 8.30, 8.40 when we, when we dropped her off. Uh, how tall is she? So you see right there, he tries to say when we dropped her off, okay? So let me play this all for you again here without me interrupting, and you'll see that there's no there there in terms of Jen and the we versus he. Okay, here we go. We dropped her off at school, close to school. I was the one who took her to school in the morning. That was my partner. Um, but yeah. Monday morning, we took her to school. We dropped her off close to school, across the street from a church, which is very, it's right next to the school, and walked to school, what we thought walked to school. Um, my boyfriend who drove her to school walk, drove away at that point. So my daughter was dropped off close to school this morning, but never made right. it. I went to the drop from school. I, 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 possibly, I don't know. She got dropped off. She was like, I, um, so she's embarrassed by this car. So she didn't want to be dropped off at school. She wanted to be dropped off like half a block away so she can walk. It's an interesting. She's in the face. But um, he dropped her off half a block away and drove away. Okay. Did she ever go to school though? No, she, we called school. She was walking in that direction. She was rifling through her backpack, just looking for something. I thought maybe she was just looking for headphones before she caught her walking on. Yeah. Um, but she was just kind of, you know, shambling over in that direction. It looked Achieving. the same as any other morning. Okay. okay. Um, okay. What was the last thing you asked? If she had went to school, I think that's what it was. Um, was the last time you seen her? Do you know the around what time? Around 8.30, 8.40 when, when we dropped her off. Okay. How tall is she? Yeah, so I wouldn't be surprised at all if Stephen Stearns is the one that sort of plants the seed of the we, but Jennifer said he dropped her off every single time um, in every statement that I've ever seen her make. And this is part of a sworn statement here. So it says 226, 2024, approximately 8 a.m. hours, she saw Maddie getting ready for school. Now we know that that information right there is not accurate and could be a possible... A uh, lie told intentionally. Uh, we don't know. And also this is their, it's a sworn statement, but that's not what we're reading here. We're reading the interpretation of the sworn statement. So you'd have to see how it was actually written to know if she really said it just like that. She saw Maddie getting ready for school. And then it says, Jennifer stated Stephen Stearns took her to school. So right off the bat, law enforcement's known this. That's all that really matters. Then she did a couple interviews and she said we, but then switched it to he also. So this whole notion regarding that is completely bogus. And unfortunately, you're still being sold that bill of goods by some media outlets and YouTubers out there. Jennifer stated Stephen Stearns took her to school and dropped her off close to the school. 
Jennifer said Stefan dropped Maddie off on Town Loop Boulevard between Town Center Boulevard and Hunters Park Lane. Jennifer said Stefan dropped her off between 8.30 hours and 8.45. Now that timing right there actually works in terms of if Stefan Stearns was last seen at 8.31 leaving the complex, then it only takes like 10 minutes or so to get to the school, so that would make it uh, 841 and that would be right between 830 and 845. Now I don't know if that's what you know Stefan Stearns worked this out in his mind and told her that but this is the interview very early on so it does seem like Stefan Stearns was aware of what he was doing. I wonder what the original real reason was that he drove back because that part still never makes any sense. It could be that he wanted to get her body out of the complex as early as possible and spent some of the time driving around, then goes back to the apartment for a little bit and then leaves at a time that's more reasonable and wants to be seen on camera at that time as well. And then, you know, So the McDonald's thing was actually part of Stefan Stern's ruse because if you remember, when he got back from dropping you know, Maddie's body off in the, or I guess you call it dumping her body uh, near the bamboo trees off of Hickory Tree Road. And if you remember, Stefan Stearns returned home, I believe at around 1016. And then at 1018, he called Jen, who likely was at her doctor's appointment or even in the appointment at the time, and told her something about them wanting to go to McDonald's and, and she didn't go and then she said what happened and then later uh, he explained to her that uh, she just didn't want to go to McDonald's etc. So that was part of his ruse the entire time. So I think he just wanted to get her away from the complex and he propped her up and be seen on camera. Oh yeah, I was going to take her to McDonald's first and went home. And then he had to go get his key fob, and then he drove back out there. But what was interesting is he brought up the key fob when the police questioned him on why he turned back around. Now, I have a whole bunch of other information that I'm putting together that kind of just kind of show you this sort of web of information, and I think it's pretty interesting. Now, there's one more screenshot regarding this. Jennifer then stated Maddie had a makeshift room in the living room, that had a television, a desk, a dresser, and a bed. Now, one of the things that people seem to be missing out there is this wasn't a room that you would actually sleep in, even though there's a bed there. Maddie only used this room to hang out and would never sleep there. I asked Jennifer if she visually observed Maddie in the morning of February 26, 2024, to which she stated no. I asked if she had heard her, and she stated she heard people in the kitchen, but was not sure if it was her specifically. Jennifer then stated the last time she had physically seen Maddie was on February 25th, 2024, at 2300, which is 11 p.m., when she had sent her to bed. And we know that she was sent to bed with Stephen Stearns. Now, see right there, she's admitting, you know, even though it's, she isn't saying the words, but factually stating that she's not the one that drove her to school because the last time she saw Maddie was at 11 p.m. the night before she went missing. So I hope that absolutely explains that question that people have. The we and he thing is absolutely irrelevant. She says we, but then says he's the one that dropped off Maddie every single time. All right, now look at this. At 8.19 hours, the Lincoln sedan appears at the front gate where the driver, Stearns, interacted with a security guard before being allowed to enter the gate at the front of the complex. I wonder what that uh, security guard actually said. I heard he said something. People are claiming that he said something about, is she okay? Additional video collected from near the rental office, which captured the roundabout, showed the female believed to be uh, Maddie in the same position as the previous video at 7.36. And then at 8.31 hours, the Silver Lincoln exited the back gate. The video captured the female still in the same position as the other videos, still in the front passenger seat. This is 8.31. So 
So at 819, he went through the main entrance, as we know, and that's the roundabout. And it's interesting right here, looking at this, um, I didn't realize this until just now, but they actually see her in the vehicle at 736 in the vehicle. As it says right here, believed to be Maddie in the same position as the previous video at 736. So we always knew that around 736, 735 is when he was putting items into the dumpster, which turns out to be a white plastic bag with a backpack inside and one croc shoe, the same croc shoe that uh, they mention in the body camera footage when being interviewed. And when I say they, it's Stefan Stearns mentions the Crocs. But, I mean, it's interesting because also inside the backpack is the laptop, and that was missing, and he mentions how, and he claims he sees her looking through her backpack, and, you know, we know that's just absolutely not true, but it's interesting now that we know that at 736, they see her also propped up in the vehicle, and then we know at 750, the vehicle leaves the complex, and we know at 831 hours, the Silver Lincoln exits the back gate. The video captures the female still in the same position. So that's 831. Now at 819, that is when he goes back into the residence. Now this is one of Stern's statements right here. I asked Stefan to explain to me what he did when he returned to get his key fob, and that's the 819 time frame there. Stefan stated he parked, ran inside to grab the key fob, got back in his vehicle, and left the complex uh, for his morning mission. Stefan stated he dropped Maddie off at 8.40 hours, so he also is admitting that he's the one that dropped her off in this interview here. He drove directly to the smoke shop and waited approximately 5 or 10 minutes for them to open so the thing is, Stephen Stearns, he's saying he went to the smoke shop, but we know that he was kind of driving around up north in those areas up there and eventually made his way up to the top floor of a hotel and put what appears to be Maddie's lifeless body into the trunk of his vehicle by opening up the trunk, taking her body out of the passenger front seat, and putting her into the trunk. Now, if you notice, though, Stearns does not mention the dog leash right now here's Jennifer's statement I asked Jennifer what time she had woken up on February 26 2024 to which she stated she believes sometime between 8 o'clock and 8 15 hours because Stefan had gone into the room to put the leash on the dog so here's 8 8 15 it's 8 19 when he actually makes his way back uh, this is just her estimate in her head so that's pretty close and she says she comes, he comes into the room to help out with the leash. Jennifer got up to assist Stefan with placing the leash on the dog because she did not want him to pee on the bed. So she must have, the dog must have been sleeping on the bed and took the dog off the bed and then she helped put the leash on. And then he goes outside. She must have got back in the bed, I guess. Jennifer heard people in the kitchen. And as far as she knew, Maddie had gone downstairs to get ready for school. So perhaps this is when she says she saw her getting ready at 8. She didn't really see her getting ready at 8, and she was honest about that from the beginning by saying the last time she saw her was at 11 o'clock at night. In this statement here, saying she saw her getting ready at 8, if that is truly what she said, is not a true statement. Jennifer completed a sworn statement to Orange County deputies to the following. Jennifer stated... On 2-26-2024, at approximately 8 a.m. hours, she saw Maddie getting ready for school. Jennifer stated Stefan Stearns took her to school and dropped her off close to the school. Jennifer said Stefan dropped Maddie off on Town Loop Boulevard between Town Center Boulevard and Hunter's Park Lane. Jennifer said Stefan dropped her off between 8.30 hours and 8.45 hours. And again, in that statement right there, she's telling law enforcement, on February 26, that Stefan Stearns is the one that dropped Maddie off that morning, she believed, at school. Okay, the only thing that I have found so far in this case is that whole 8 o'clock 
8 a.m. sighting. I've said this since the beginning. That thing, it's definitely not true. We haven't seen the original sworn statement and how it was written. She could have said, yeah, you know, I thought she was in the, in the kitchen, you know, in the kitchen getting ready, something like that. And he took that as her seeing her getting ready. So it could have been, yeah, I thought she was in the kitchen getting ready for school. I heard some sound or, you know, maybe, you know, maybe didn't even word. She heard some sounds. So you could have just said, I thought she was in the kitchen getting ready for school. And then the person interpreting this turned it into, I saw. However, if she did say she saw Maddie getting ready for school, that, um, and she said it specifically like that, then that is a lie. That is not a truth. Um, is that a lie to sort of help Stephen Stearns out who's feeling like they're piling on everything on him at the time? Because by God, he was the one that helped. You're the one that slept in. You're the one that wanted me to take her to school. Can you help me out a little bit? And he, like Stephen Stearns does, sold her on saying something like that. I guess we'll find that out at some point in the future. So currently... In this case, I don't see anything that points directly to Jennifer being involved in the killing of Madeline Soto. I don't see any information that points to her having any knowledge that Stephen Stearns was assaulting Madeline uh, over the years. Just like all of her friends, counselors, teachers, and family members, none of them knew either just like a classic predator, Stephen Stearns manipulated them all. So thank you all very much for watching. If you could leave a comment in the comment section, let me know what you thought about various elements of this video. I think some of this stuff is very interesting. And that's all I got for you. So thank you all very much for watching again. And if you could please hit that like button, I would appreciate it. And as I always say, until next time, be safe out there. Thank you.